What's up everybody, Philosopher here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do gaming stuff sometimes. I smoke a lot of weed, I make music, I'm an artist. But anyway, this video is gonna be on the brand new Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis game. When I say brand new, I mean brandy brand new. It's only been out for like three or four days. It's on mobile, it's free to play. No ads. You can watch two ads a day if you want, but you don't have to. And it's a gotcha game. And it's fucking got me. <laughs> I, I love it. It's not just a gotcha game with a Final Fantasy VII skin. It's a really fucking good game. Even if it wasn't Final Fantasy VII, I would probably still play it. Just because I really like their, their mechanics, the progression system. It's to, to the slightly autistic mind, it is like a perfect puzzle that just all comes together. I really like how they did it. But because there is so much content in the game, it's really easy to get lost and start spending your stamina in ways that are not efficient. And if there's anything we should be, it's efficient. So I'm gonna give you my tips to playing this game. They will make you play better. I've gotten to a very high level of content in a very little amount of time, so I do know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna rattle them off in no particular order. I'm just gonna talk to you about it because if I put the screenshots and the videos to it, um, also, it would take me absolutely forever and I would never get this video done. So let's begin. I guess the first thing we should talk about is where to start leveling and what kind of first goals you should have in mind. I'll let you know what I did. This is what I recommend. I think you should build your cloud to be strong enough to take on very hard one in co-op mode any of them usually the i think the dragon's the easiest because most people will have the mirasame sword which has the thunder strike it does really good damage against that dragon but yeah work towards building up one character usually cloud because it's going to be necessary for the most content you know for anything that comes out Pretty much Cloud's gonna be a usable character unless they start having character specific things which I'm gonna get into at the end but work work on Cloud primarily as a main kind of grinder so that you can start accessing higher level content and a good a good benchmark in your mind can be very hard one um, in co-op mode after you've leveled Cloud to where you're happy and he can take on that kind of content you're gonna need to build a team too because a lot of content Cloud just won't be able to survive on his own so you're going to need two people that are your backups. And who do you pick as the two people? Well, that brings us to tip number two. What gear do I upgrade? The gear that you upgrade and the people that you use alongside Cloud are literally just what you pull the most of in the draws. You should be focusing on building your rarest gear because those are going to be the ones that provide the biggest stat advantages, the best moves, and they're going to be used the most when you hit the recommended button to put the gear on your characters because it, it prioritizes rare gear, and if the rare gear is also leveled well, then the stats are going to be much higher than anything else. So when you're enhancing gear and you're focusing on what, what do I want to build next, focus on whatever you have the most copies of, whatever has ranked the highest. That's That should be guiding who is in your team. It should be guiding who is in your team and who you're leveling the hardest at the moment besides always using cloud because you want to get cloud up to level 50 as much as possible. Like I said earlier, um, focusing on other characters not as important but you still want to level sort of evenly up to a certain point the experience that you get shares very nicely and your characters you don't use will start to level up to like 15 or 20 but they will not get to 30 unless you use them so you need to start using them a good thing to use them on is content that you you have to grind but it's way too weak for your max team like for example daily missions or um, once you get to a certain point that you can grind like the Reno boss fight for you know the gold materials or the steel materials like the boxes those fights are around 39,000 you don't need to use your main team for that you could start using your weakest members and giving them some experience if I was the developers of this game trying to make money and also provide a good player experience I'm gonna think of implementing some way to force people to use certain characters and it's only three or four days into the game so I mean I'm sure they're on it but it's wonderful to have Red 13 in the game, but not a lot of people are gonna like fucking use Red 13 as their main or in their in their team unless you make them, unless you give them a reason to to need to. There's just gonna be a certain like meta of three characters that people use and then 
just weird people that use their favorites, I guess. But, you know, like, you, you're going to have to put in a system where, like, character-specific dungeons, I know they have character stories, but those stories reward you for those characters. So if you don't use those characters, you don't need to do those dungeons. It doesn't matter. So they need to make character-specific events that give you rewards for your whole account. And then that would force you to use those characters. I'm sure they will. That's why I'm not letting the weakest members just stay weak. I'm also trying to build up from the lowest. And a great way to do that takes us to tip number three. Don't sleep on the chocobo farm. Don't. It's amazing. You gotta buy the extra slot, not with money, just unlock it. Um, always have three going at the same time. Wait until you get your first thousand medals to drop on a better level chocobo at the shop and then just go to town use all the choco boosters you have use all the bookmarks you have on material like you don't need to save those like stand pots because it's it's really really good to get those items in early i think getting getting at least to the mid early late game of the content that they have available now is more important than saving that stuff save that stuff after you can access that get full access to everything and then start saving for events that's that's my theory on the best way to play this but if you start sending out your weakest weakest team members on chocobo missions they will start racking up crazy experience the levels you get i was very very surprised of not even using them in battle but i've got i think i brought zach from level 20 to 30 just using chocobo missions you get tons of experience Using weaker characters in the chocobo missions doesn't affect the, the rate or anything. It doesn't affect the mission at all. Only the chocobo matters. So the person only matters based on who you want to give experience to. So use your weakest and build up your the lowest members of your team. It doesn't really cost anything to do that. Tip number four, materia synthesis. Always have materia synthesis going. Unlock all the slots, very important because you want to maximize what you're doing if you need materials i mean you're always going to be getting materials for synthesis but you can once in a while grind a synthesis dungeon the key here is to always be synthesizing and it doesn't matter what let me explain why there are not a lot of materia level up items in the game you get them in the beginning but they become very very rare and the only way to start leveling up materia is using other materia so basically you've got to always always be synthesizing crap to use to level up that's what it's for anything that's two stars one star is garbage is absolute garbage because three star is there and once you unlock a three star that's that's it so your goal is to get three three star materia of everything on your characters so think oh i gotta get it if i want fire on all of my team say i'm facing shiva and i need all of my characters to have fire well my goal should be to get a three-star fire for all of them and then upgrade that to a three-star fire to all of them. And then any other fire material I get or make is just used to level up stuff. That's it. You don't have to worry about is this two-star better than that two-star. They are all the same. They are all pretty much garbage once you unlock three-star material. So just, just keep synthesizing just keep synthesizing until you get lucky enough to get the three star and don't be afraid to use synthesis items you enhance them with the items you can use 10 of them at a time you can use 10 of the middle tier and the lower tier it really doesn't affect that much i still i still synthesize tons and tons of two star so i mean you get a lot of them and there's tons of ways to get them so don't you don't need to be stingy about those either just as long as you have them put them on and and go for go for that three star and if not just just use that to level up something you just use it to level up what you need at that time tip number four regards the drawing and your stamina use this may be common sense but maybe 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 you think like oh i have one run in me or i have one draw to use maybe i should use that don't bad idea Never waste a draw when there's a times 10 draw available because the times 10 draw has a ticket and you get rewards for using the time 10 draw because you get spots on the ticket. Why would you ever put money or crystals into a draw that doesn't give you a bonus reward when something does give you a bonus reward? If there's, there's, there seems to always be something with a ticket available, like a special draw, 
But if there's not, if there comes a time where there's only the regular draw, just, just save your crystals. There's no point. Just wait until there is a ticket draw and then start using your time tens where you can get rewards. It doesn't make sense to pull any other time. And with stamina, that you want to use the times three, or and now it's times four for prom, uh, the promotion event, if you get that booster, because if you run into a cactuar randomly, it boosts all the materials you get for that fight. So if you do a times one run and you run into a cactuar, you get the bonus materials times one. But if you do a times three or times four run, and you run into cactuars, well now you get the bonus materials times four, which is way better if you don't know. So don't don't just use if you, oh, like I have 15 or 20 energy, let me get a run in, don't. Don't worry about your energy hitting max because it, it's really slow. So you, you'll, you won't hit max before you check into the game again usually. So let, let it build up until you can definitely do a times three or times four run. You should always be using the max stamina you can uh, for rewards and the last tip i have for you which if i'm counting correctly should be tip number five is you want to think of the dungeons for enhancing items all as separate don't think of them as tiered like i did in the beginning let me explain what i mean when you're doing for example the rose gold dungeon there's three tiers tier one gives you something tier two gives you something and tier three gives you something in some games, if you did tier 3, you would get the stuff from tier 1 and 2 also, but now you get the tier 3 stuff. In this game, you will not get the tier 1 and 2 stuff as much. If you need tier 2 stuff, don't do the 3 dungeon, you have to do the 2 dungeon. So, so think of them as completely separate for whatever material. If, you're, if you need the box rose gold, if you need the, the bar of rose gold, do that one. Don't think like, oh, I should always be doing level 3 because I can do level 3. You don't have to be afraid to do level 2 because you're going to get a lot more of those level 2 materials especially than if you were doing the level 3. You don't ever need to do the level 1 because you can synthesize those directly in the, the menu. The item synthesis lets you take the boxes and put them into the bars at a, at a pretty fair rate. So I mean you might as well just always get boxes and then if you need the, the bars you can exchange a few, but the, the need for those bars are going to become less and less as you play, you know, until you don't really need them anymore at all. You're only going to need the higher level materials. So you, you might as well like, always farm boxes and exchange down what you need. Yeah, think of them as separate. That The same does not go for other dungeons like, like the Materia dungeon. You will get better materials by always grinding the hardest one that you can because that just gives you more of the stuff that you need, uh, not different stuff. When you're thinking of gear, the enhancement dungeons, like the rose gold, the steel, those those are separate. I should have just started with this. Uh, wh whatever you need, whatever item you need, you click on it and it tells you where to find it. And I noticed that sometimes it would say, oh, use the level two dungeon. And I'm like, why would, I, why would it tell me to use the level two dungeon when it drops in the level three dungeon and I can do it easily? Because it drops a lot less so you should use the level 2 dungeon. So if you ever wonder which one you should use, click on the item, see what the game recommends. It usually knows. Here's a bonus tip for you since I said the word recommend. The auto battle feature is very good. You should always use it. It pretty much knows what you need just like the auto formation feature knows what you need. You can use that to see where your weak links are, auto form your team, and then go into your team individually, your teammates, and see What's level one? What do I need to bring up? What can I work on for this fight to make my strength, my overall strength better? Regarding the auto battling, it always switches on time. It knows what to do. It works the sigil attacks perfectly. So just use it. Don't be a don't be a fucking tryhard. Don't be, don't play it on Dark Souls mode for no reason. Auto battle. When your auto battler stuns an enemy, like obviously that's the best time to start using your limit breaks. You should always use the limit breaks together for the damage bonus. There's no point in using it individually. You should always use your limit breaks after you stun an enemy because it doesn't make sense to use it any other time. But the tip, the auto battler, when you stun an enemy, very often switches to defense mode because you are going to pop a heal because the game wants to heal when you stun an enemy, that's the time that you know you can get your HP back up safely. So the first thing it does is switch to defense, heal, and then switch to attack. So 
don't pop your load too fast when you stun your enemy and release your limit breaks in defense mode. Watch your enemy get stunned, shield, heal, the auto battler, I promise you, will go back to attack mode before your enemy is unstunned. Then you use your limit breaks. Make sure that the, the icon is red and not blue so that you know you're in attack mode and not defense. Your limit breaks will literally do probably twice as much damage or half as much damage if you're in the wrong mode. I hope this has been helpful. This is a compilation of just things that I have written down while I was going through the game and I'm like, this might be helpful for other people. If you know it's their first time running a game like this, oh, I just like Final Fantasy VII, let me try it. But they don't know much about gacha games. I gotcha, gotcha back. I really like that joke, obviously, so I used it again, fuck it, whatever. Thank you for watching. You can check out my links below. I make music, I make art, I'm on social media. Now I make Final Fantasy VII videos, I guess. I also make Mech Arena videos. That's another great mobile game. If you, if you need another game to add to your repertoire, I highly recommend that one. It's super fun and I'll never stop playing it because it's got a special place in my heart and, uh, and I love the community there. So yeah, not giving up on that, but I'm gonna start streaming content for both and, and maybe more stuff in the future if you guys like this. So yeah, enjoy the game and use these tips to become very, very strong. Take care.